In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate internal consistency, which is a form of reliability that's designed to test whether all of the items in your scale are working together. This is important because if you, for example, had one item in which participants tend to respond very differently than the others, this would suggest that this item is perhaps not a good way to measure what you're trying to measure, and it might be instead tapping into something else. So internal consistency allows you to assess that. The way we measure internal consistency is called Cronbach's alpha. This is the actual calculation we'll do to put a number on this idea of internal consistency. And here's the formula. So in this formula, k is the number of items. So that's really easy right off the bat. And we're just going to make a note of what that is. We already know that there are three items in this scale. So I'm just going to write over here k equals 3. So that's easy. That part of the problem is always very quick. Uh, what makes these problems quite a lot of work is this second part. You're going to see lots of s squareds here. There's going to be different subscripts. Here we have sigma, which means take the sum of some s squareds. But remember that s squared is just a sample variance. And this is where most of the work of this problem comes into play. We need to calculate sample variance several times. s squared is sample variance. So, what goes into this formula we'll talk about at the very end. It's just a variety of sample variances. So here we have some data. Again, we'll come back to that. But for, for now, let's work with this data. So we have three items. This is a scale with three items. Here is Bob's uh, sort of responses, for example. On item one, he said six. On item two, he said six. And on item three, he said eight. So he's scoring pretty similarly on all three. And so on for it looks like seven or so different participants here. So the first step in any internal consistency problem, in any Cronbach's alpha problem, is to create a total column. So the total column is simply a sum of each participant's scores. So here we have 6 plus 6 plus 8. That comes out to 20. For participant number 2, 5 plus 5 plus 6 comes out to 16. For participant 3, 9 plus 8 plus 6 is 23. For participant number 4, 3 plus 2 plus 4 comes out to 9. Uh, and we're almost there, a couple more. 2 plus 3 plus 2 is 7. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. And finally, 5 plus 4 plus 6 comes out to 15. So now we're done with the setup, and here's where all the work comes in. You have to calculate the sample variance of each column of items. So in a previous video, I told you how to calculate sample variance. If you're at all uncomfortable with that, I really encourage you to pause this video, go back and watch the measures of variability video, how to calculate standard deviation and variance, and focus specifically on how to calculate sample variance, because that's what we're doing here over and over. So for now, I'm just going to write like variance down here in this table to remind me that I'm going to need the variance of each column. And I'm not going to go through the work of the variance for each uh, column here. This is something you would have to do. I'm just going to give you the answers for now because I don't want to get too bogged down with the details here. So for item 1, the variance is 7.29. Again, think about what this means. You would have to take this data, create a new table, find the mean of these data, of, of this column here, subtract the mean from each number, square that value, add them all up, and divide by n minus 1, 7 minus 1, or 6 in this case. So again, if that process is familiar to you, awesome, keep going. If that sounds intimidating or you're not so sure about that, again, review sample variance. So the sample variance for item 2 is 5.81. The sample variance for item 3 is 5.14. And the sample variance for the total column is 48.95. So once you've done this, again, this will take some work, but once you've done this, you're ready to plug into your formula. We already know what k equals. Now let me break down the second part here. s squared sub y, you'll see that twice. That's simply the variance of the total column. y here sort of represents the observed score, the outcome score, your y variable. So that's 48.95, and that'll go here in the numerator and here in the denominator. Sigma s squared sub i is simply the sum of each individual variance for each item. So this is going to be, again, i here you can think of as item or individual, each individual item, either way works. So it's the s squared for the first item plus the s squared for the second item plus the s squared for the third item. So we can go ahead and write some of that out. 
So we already know that S squared sub Y comes out to 48.95. There's no additional work required there. Now sigma S squared sub I requires just some addition. 7.29, the variance of item 1, plus 5.81, the variance of item 2, plus 5.14, the variance of item 3. And if you do this simple addition, you'll end up with 18.24. And now we're ready to plug in. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have k over k minus 1. k equals 3. So this is going to be 3 over 3 minus 1, which will eventually come out to 2. So s squared sub y, we already know, is 48.95 minus the sum of each individual item's variance. That was 18.24 divided by, again, this 48.95. So if you plug this into your calculator, you're going to end up with 0 0.941, which is your Cronbach's alpha. This is a measure of internal consistency. And just as a rough interpretation, we want things positive. We want things as close to 1 as possible. So 0.94 is an excellent value of Cronbach's alpha.